tell my parents to recently um and it's something I just kept to myself because I didn't really know how to even tell my friends I never imagined myself not finishing school in four years hey y'all what is up it's your girl Destiny Ariana and today I am back with another video <laughs> If you've been here before welcome back and if you are new welcome to my college and lifestyle channel where i do lifestyle vlogs college vlogs um and just talk about myself and my life in general so if you want to see more content like that please make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell so you can be notified whenever i post another video so uh as you guys can see in the title this is not what i was expecting this video to look like or consist of but I do this every year so of course this is going to be my junior year recap this little disclaimer this is going to be part one of a two-part series um one being me just talking about what was junior year what did I learn what did I do things like that you guys know how these videos go right now um and part two will just be behind the scenes footage of my junior year just reminding myself of what campus was like what my life was like at Bowdoin before coronavirus and all those things just remembering sort of the good times that junior year brought me um as well as what it was like to study at home remotely for the remainder of spring semester okay so i guess i can start just thinking about fall so um if you guys have watched my fall semester recap you know that i ended off fall semester pretty well your girl got straight A's for the first time in college and honestly speaking I never thought that I would get there like I definitely have worked super hard to try and get the best grades possible but I feel like there's a stigma around getting A's in college and that being sort of impossible and extremely hard and I'm not gonna lie it's extremely hard um but I just didn't think that, that was something that I'd be able to achieve while at Bowdoin you know so fall semester was definitely a lot for me um first things first I changed my major um you know it was the first time that I got straight A's and it was also the semester where I had realized that I wasn't going to study abroad and as a junior that's a lot to sort of deal with your first semester but as the story unfolds you guys will see how I sort of dealt with that as the year progressed so during fall semester I changed my major after the AFAM 50th Africana Studies um, celebration that Bowdoin had and just witnessing the amazing Black alum which has inspired me as an artist um, and as an academic just generally you know um, listening to all of the Black alum that I met that weekend I'm um, also hearing David C. Driscoll speak who may rest in peace as we lost him um, I think about a month ago, um, just being blessed to be in his presence and hearing him speak honestly has inspired me in so many ways. And that's honestly the force that triggered me to changing my major to an Africana Studies, um, Art History and Visual Arts Interdisciplinary major. Through the work that I've done with my research project, I've realized that I've been pushing more towards learning through interdisciplinary practice you know, and what that means for me. And I've realized that the courses that I've been taking at Bowdoin have all combined. And I think that's the beauty of a liberal arts education is when all of the courses that you take start to overlap and you feel yourself really getting the most of that information. And it's definitely pushed me in terms of wanting to pursue um, interdisciplinary work. So I did that um, in about November and the semester was hard. It was long. And then I ended it. And then if you guys know, um, January 1st, I actually went to South Africa with Melon. But if you guys have been keeping track of my journey this entire year, um, just my last couple of videos, you'd understand that the trip started off amazing and then uh, took a turn for the worst um, towards the end. I had an amazing experience, met amazing people. I literally, you guys will see this in the part two, but I'll show footage that I didn't get to uh, show because I have some that I like sent to my mom, but if you guys know, when I was in South Africa, I was actually robbed at gunpoint um, and I lost my phone and I lost a lot of the footage that I had recorded when I was on that trip. Um, and that was probably one of the hardest things that I've had to go through in my life. 
um i dealt with ptsd um i was super depressed super sad i actually didn't want to return to campus so what a lot of people don't know about what happened uh spring semester for me is when i returned back to campus i really just didn't want to be there um i contemplated not even really returning to Bowdoin. i wanted to take a semester off it was very very hard for me um in many ways but emotionally i just wasn't okay um when you're dealing with a traumatic experience you never really know how your body is going to deal with it you don't know how you're going to deal with it mentally and that was something that i don't think i could have ever been prepared for or ever could have been prepared to deal with um and it was something that changed a lot of things in my life i'm going to be super honest with you guys um but there'd be times in like the first couple of weeks of classes where i'd be in class and i couldn't hear anything that the teacher was saying because I was having flashbacks of the situation over and over in my head um and that was extremely hard to deal with especially after such a strong semester bringing up my gpa i feared for just failing out you know and that was probably in the back of my head whenever these things were going on it was like you have to snap out of it because you don't want to mess up your grades you have to finish strong and like that was the voice that was replaying over and over in my head you know and to hear that while i can't really control what i'm feeling um having people around me in campus just like oh my god because it's all the pictures that i posted on instagram and honestly like they were great pictures but i didn't really talk about the situation when it first happened so initially i get back to campus and everybody's like oh my gosh destiny like south africa looked amazing like how was it how was it you know and i don't blame people for asking me they just didn't really know what was going on um and that was tough that was really tough to sort of suck everything in hold my breath and just say like it was really good knowing that inside i was suffering you know a lot and then um a couple weeks in i think maybe like three weeks in it really started to get to me um i stopped sort of talking to people at school my friendships were suffering you know i just didn't really know how to deal with what i was feeling I just went into a really deep depression. I wasn't ready to really talk about it yet. I just act like nothing had happened. I told the people closest to me. Um, but even then, I don't even think the people closest to me really had a gist for what was going on because I, I wasn't really vocal because I didn't know how. It wasn't that I didn't wanna tell people about what was going on with me. I would open my mouth to speak and um, words wouldn't come out i didn't really know what to say um i would be kind of shaky and it felt like i was freezing because for a long time i kept reliving the moment for a long time i just kept wondering what could have happened you know and and i just wasn't okay like i don't know how much to stress that when you're not okay you know you're not okay you need that time to heal and being at a place like Bowdoin is so academically rigorous and expects a lot from you like i definitely got the counseling services that i needed which were free and covered through Bowdoin but that environment is not one to really be in when you're struggling with something like that so i really questioned if i wanted to return to campus after I released the video, that was a release for me when I basically talked about what happened and that was the first time I went public about it. Um, I made a personal decision that if I went home and I didn't feel okay, I wasn't gonna come back to Bowdoin for the remainder of spring semester. I didn't tell my parents recently um, and it's something I just kept to myself because I didn't really know how to even tell my friends. I never imagined myself not finishing school in four years. You know, I never imagined myself having life happen. Like, people always talk about how life happens. That really just never crossed my mind. That was probably really hard for me to ask myself, is this one of those times where life is happening, destiny, and you need to take care of yourself? And y'all, like, I really feel like I was there. If school was back in session and coronavirus didn't happen, I honestly don't think that I would have been at Bowdoin to continue my spring semester. I just realized that I actually didn't tell you guys the courses that I was taking at the time, but for the spring, I was enrolled in Intro to Photography. I was in an advanced collaborative study. 
um, that one of my senior friends had actually self-designed, which was a collective for Black women artists. I also took Intro to Art History, finally. Um, and the last course was my Africana Studies Capstone, which is my senior seminar, um, which was Black Heat, Black Cool, Theorizing Blackness. Don't get me wrong, I loved all of the courses that I picked. I felt like I really picked courses that were going to help me in all of my majors. It was just extremely difficult for me to juggle academics and my mental health during the beginning of spring semester, you know, and y'all, I think that throughout my life I've perfected the illusion of happiness. Like, so many people wouldn't know what's really going on in my head, so many people wouldn't know what's really happening because like I'm one of those people that sadly like I put others before myself like I'd rather just not be that burden you know and this is something that I'm personally working on um and I know that there are so many people who probably would have stepped up to support me and be there for me you know but with what I was going through I knew that I had to get to a place where I could be okay myself before I let somebody else in you know I got the counseling services that I needed and I just wanted to start off with a counselor first before I really told friends what was going on with me is that you know when traumatic things happen there's no manual book for how to deal with trauma you don't know exactly how to heal yourself right away you don't know how your body's going to react you don't know that a teacher is going to just speak about a reference like literally this happened and there was this comparison to um the action of taking a picture, like shooting a gun, you know? And I heard that in class and I know that the teacher had no idea what was going on with me and uh, a lot of people didn't know what was going on. But when I heard that, imagine what's going through my head. I'm learning here, I'm sitting here learning about photography and minutes later, I'm trying to catch my breath because I'm hyperventilating, replaying what had happened over and over again in my head. And it's just like when you can't control something like that and you're dealing with that almost on a daily basis when you don't know what things are going to trigger you it's really difficult if you guys have watched most of my recent videos i spoke a lot about different things um i spoke about what happened in south africa specifically i've also spoken about why i didn't go abroad so you know i talked about that a lot i talked about how i was going to be in italy and then I didn't end up in Italy due to financial reasons and things just weren't working out. And I kind of just was like, you know, if this is not meant for me, I'm not going to force it. And I'm just going to go with whatever plan God has for me, you know, that was it. Um, so I just decided not to go abroad. That redirection, that that block that was put there was protecting me. And I like, I can never, ever question it. Like, I just really can't. Like, I knew I was going to Italy. I had everything prepared to go. And then things just kept getting in my way. And I was like, well, what's going on? And now, like, I wasn't there. And we all know what happened. And I'm just beyond grateful. I couldn't see it then. And um, I just look back and I'm just like, wow. Days after spring break, we received an email basically saying, you know, hey, guys, you're going to have to get your stuff up and evacuate in a couple of days. You know, and that was extremely hard and extremely difficult to deal with. You know, um just having to conceptualize moving like leaving campus in the middle of the semester like i know it was a crazy experience for so many people um i just still can't even explain that pain that anger that frustration that i felt that first week you know like what, what does this even mean you know just listening to the stories of other people how everyone is going to be affected by this like i was just like this is absolutely crazy but then I have to put into perspective, like this is a global pandemic. So many people are dealing with this situation. So I sort of decentered myself and I started thinking about everyone else, you know, and just trying to find comfort in the fact that we're all dealing with this at the same time. Like we're all going through this together. Um, and I think that that truly brought me a lot of comfort throughout the situation. But I actually think I was blessed with not as much as a, of a rigorous workload as my peers were. Like, I still had to create art at home. Like I still had photography. I still had the advanced collaborative study. Um, I still had my seminar and my art history course. But the way that they basically um, stretched it out was art history. I just received a recorded lecture 
in which I would just have to take notes on it um, and basically prepare for a take home exam. Um, and I had a paper to write. For my seminar class, we just met every Monday for like two hours, still did the reading, still discussions and led presentations on the books we were supposed to do for the remainder of the semester. I switched from a film camera to using my iPhone camera. For the advanced collaborative study, I actually produced a painting um, that was of my great grandmother. So this is probably one of the other things that's happened this semester um, that I don't think I could have ever been prepared for. So I have a great grandmother, her name is Grace. And uh, this April, this past April, we actually lost her. Um, she just passed of old age, you know, and she went peacefully. But my great grandmother is someone that I hold dear to my heart. You know, she's 100% Wampanoag. Um, and the entire reason why I have native blood in me, I'm so proud of that, you know, every summer, since I was born, I've gone to her house on the vineyard, spent time with her. You know, I love her dearly. My, like my mom was raised by her for times in her life, you know, and it was just such a hard situation. We went to actually see her at Thanksgiving of this year um, because we were nervous. We, we knew she was going, but we didn't know when. So I got to see her the last time for Thanksgiving um, but the morning that she passed, we actually got to FaceTime her. And um, I got to say goodbye through FaceTime, which was extremely difficult. But I'm beyond grateful that I actually got to speak to her before she went. And um, we lost her. And that's been extremely hard for me to deal with, especially during school, continuing remote learning, um, being in quarantine um i've had to watch my great grandmother be buried through a facebook live video and uh i couldn't be with my family during that time and it just that pain is probably indescribable and uh i still haven't really processed it but yeah um it's just been really hard to sort of deal with um grieving and um dealing with this remotely on top of trying to finish school so my nana passed on a sunday and i actually had a presentation the next day for class for that to basically push through um it's just been a f extremely emotional and rough semester for me just generally but i can just sort of speak on that just briefly like i've been extremely distant this semester a lot of people have been saying I'm just different, why they don't see me, you know, why they don't hear from me. And I've just been probably in one of the hardest seasons of my life, but one of the most important seasons of my life because this is probably one of those turning points that is going to push me into becoming the person that I know I'm gonna be one day. Um, since January 1st, my life has changed in drastic ways. And since 2020 has started, I just, I can't even put it into words, you know. Um, I haven't been the same since I returned from South Africa. And I'm really still processing and understanding what that means because I am still healing from that situation. I am still trying to find myself again, if that makes sense. I am still now grieving over the loss of my great grandmother. And now I am trying to mentally prepare myself for whatever is to come in the next coming year um for senior year of course um and just you know i know that it's a lot for everyone during this time um but i just haven't really been the same you know and this semester has just taught me a lot and i look forward to the summer to giving myself the time needed to completely heal you know, give my, myself time to um, learn about myself again, you know, and just take that time out that I, I haven't really gotten, you know, and I'm just beyond grateful for being able to grieve with my family at home because y'all, y'all already know I've explained earlier in the video, I wasn't even thinking about returning to campus, you know, 
So to think if I was back on campus and I decided to go there and then found out about my great grandmother, I don't know how I would have reacted. You know, and that just, it hurts a lot, but I'm just grateful that I was able to be here with my family when, when you know, we all needed each other, you know? Um, and I think that's one of the only things that is helping me get through this time is having my family unit at home. Like I'd miss them and I'd needed them since I even, I didn't want to even go to school in January, you know, but I look at them and it's like, I have these thoughts when I'm at school because my parents like literally sacrificed so much for me to be where I am. Junior year has been a whirlwind of, you know, amazing memories of heartache, of pain, um, of just learning about myself in ways that, you know, I've expected, haven't expected, um, and just extreme growth. I feel like that's the best way that I can explain it. It's just truly been a crazy semester within itself. Like y'all, y'all know, y'all like y'all hearing me speak about this. And um I've always been very transparent with you guys about most of my um experiences in college. And like I'm finishing up my junior year, literally about to be a rising senior. Like I'm gonna be in my last year of undergrad next year. Um, and junior year has probably been one of the hardest years that I've had, not because of academics, but just emotionally life happened for me. But um, I'm just here to let you guys know that things happen, you know, life happens. And um, I'm just human like anybody else is and I'm dealing with these things, you know, I can sit here and look back and just wish that I did things better. But these experiences teach you for the next ones. And I just want people to hear me out hear my story and just let people know that they're not alone when these things happen you know when you're in college you may lose someone really close to you you may lose someone that you really cared about traumatic things happen all of these things happen but you or to people that you know just knowing that my healing is not going to be linear um has definitely helped me and the process of it but um i think that this video is extremely long i have no idea how long it is but if you've made it this far and you've heard me out just i really appreciate it and i truly thank you for hearing out my story so much for watching this video i really appreciate it if you're not already subscribed please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel yet again um but yeah thank you guys and i'll see you guys on the next video Tell me about